I, I, my head is spinning. Now, look, Dow is up 136. Okay, so with these markets, where you open is vastly different from where you close. And today's action is a prime example. But the Dow's movement over the past four sessions has been a head spinner. Each day seeing 600 plus point swings, the longest string of that since October of 2008 which you may not want to remember was the month after Lehman Brothers failed. But the stock of CME, Chicago Merck, right? The old Chicago Merck, the gigantic futures trading platform shows how uniquely positioned it is to benefit from this. The stock is up 30 percent year to date. And in a Fox Business exclusive, we take it to the CME and the man who leads this behemoth that handles massive trading moves in oil, Bitcoin futures, volatility futures, Terry Duffy. Great to see you, Terry. Thanks for coming on. Well, Liz, thank you for having me. It's always great to be a guest on the number one business show in America. <laughs> number one uh, closing bell show, right? Yes. Second, second behind Varney. He gets very touchy about that. But Mr. <laughs> Varney is number one. We'll give him that. Terry, the markets are okay. more, I don't know, mercurial yep. than a teenager lately. What do you see through your window <laughs> that's driving these moves? You know, Liz, there's a whole host of factors. I've been saying this for a little while now. You referenced October of 2008 just a moment ago. Um, you know, we have a lot of people participating in the marketplace that never saw a downtick in the market. So a lot of people don't know how to trade both sides of the market. And because historically, you know, since the last 10 years, you bought it, it went up, and you made money, and it was easy. So now when the volatility comes in, it doesn't signal it's coming in. It comes in like everything else. It's fast and furious. And, and I think people are having a really hard time adjusting to the way the market's trading now. And for those of us that have been around a long time, we've seen this movie before. So we're not a bit surprised, but I think a mm -hmm. lot of participants have not seen it. Well, it is hard for investors, I think. You know, last week was the worst week for the Dow, S&P and NASDAQ since, yep. I think, March. But the week prior was the best for those indices right. since 2016. You know, for anybody who's kind of lost about this, what do you see successful investors out there do each and every time? Well, I think what they do is they, they, they manage their risk and they have to take a measured approach uh, going forward. You just can't put all your you know, eggs into one basket, for lack of a better term, you, you have to manage your risk, be diversified in your portfolios, and understand that we're going to have volatile times. We've never seen a government act like we've had here in the United States. I'm not saying it's good, bad, or indifferent. It's just a little bit more unique, and it's influencing the markets more than it ever has. We have the Brexit situation, which I know people have been talking about all day because of what happened over there with their vote being canceled. So there's a lot of factors that go into the marketplace. So when you have that, you have to be diversified in your portfolio if you're going to be around for the next day's bell to open. Okay, so I, I need to just quickly whip through some of these things. And, and you got to talk to me about yeah. the oil futures because oil futures yeah. obviously trade at the CME. And it's been a, a pretty negative picture for oil since October when it hit the highs. It's down about 30% since then. That's a full-on bear market territory move. Intraday, we're, we're looked to be in the aftermarket session at about 51.70. But is that the Federal Reserve? Is that OPEC? What is that? Is that trade? I think it's a combination of all the above, but most importantly, uh, Liz, it's a fundamentally driven equation on oil. When you look at the United States, and you and I have talked about this over the last number of years, here's the United States of America being one, one of the number one oil producers in the world, and before we couldn't produce a couple barrels a day, and now here we are producing all this oil. There, there's just a lot of oil out there right now, and people have become more efficient in their uses of it, so hence you're going to have the volatility like this in the oil market. And it doesn't surprise me a bit making highs in October, then coming down uh, actually under $50 one day last week, I believe, for a brief second. So this is not surprising at all. And I think this is another reason why you need to manage these risks and be diversified. Well, you, you have a unique window through which you look because you see these massive flows. I think you averaged in December, what, 21.7 million contracts yep. per day. Yes. And that was up 21% yes. year over year. What are you seeing now in December? Is it more volatile per day? It has been fairly active, Liz. I mean, for December, okay, wait, wait. normally uh, we, you know. More than November? Uh, the volatility has not, not been as great as November, but the volumes on CME have continued to grow. When you look at where we're at just on the several days we're into December, we've been doing 25 to 30 million contracts a day, 
And, you know, when you put the notional values associated with that, you're talking about trillions of dollars a day of notional value going in and out of the doors of CME, and that's the risk that we're managing today. So, you know, sometimes you can get lost with that number of $21 million. doesn't sound big until you actually look at the notional value of those contracts. It's in the trillions on a daily basis. Yeah, so I know. Quite I know. large, uh, quite large uh, of the the markets that we're representing here. Wow, so it's continuing to grow from what I thought was a pretty hot November. You're, you're a big businessman, yeah. um, you know, who sees uh, through a different lens. Tell us how you see the U.S. economy. Uh, some data show that it's slowing down. I think today we got small business sentiment slumping to about a seven-month low. We see some other indications that, that there's a moderating pace. What do you see? I think we've got spoiled a little bit, Liz. I think when we keep seeing good numbers go on for a period of time, when we get a little bit of a downtick, I think we take it too far to the extreme. I think that the number that you have to look at is the unemployment number and really focus on that. And when you look at, you know, there's people out looking for workers right now, which historically you never talked about. People were out looking for jobs. And now we have a shortage of workers. Now, they may not be the most advantageous jobs, but at the same time, we have unemployment down at record lows for the most part. And, uh, we have people out looking for workers. That's one of the things I focus on. So I, I can't get too worked up about the interday downticks. I think you right. have to take a look yeah. at the longer picture of the economy and the U.S. especially. Hi, you're coming up on a one-year anniversary. One year ago next week, you guys launched the first Bitcoin <laughs> futures. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, so there, there are all the black helicopter ideas out there. And there's an outfit called right. Crypto IQ that, that's blaming you guys, saying, oh, you guys are printing paper oh, Bitcoins. God. And there really was only yeah. supposed to be 21 million in bitcoins out there and it used to be 19,000 this is your fault that it's only 3305 um, listen I, I look at this as saying you guys just opened a window and brought the sunshine in on on where this thing would find its water level what do you say to that well you can take any market to any price when there's only one side of the trade Liz and that's exactly where cryptocurrencies were mm -hmm. there was no way to create a two-sided market because there was no short uh, ability to short the market and there's no markets that's going to be sustainable unless you have both sides of the trade on there. And Bitcoin, when we launched it, obviously there was a sentiment that uh, other people thought it was overvalued. And they appear to be correct right now. But when you look at it, we're trading roughly 3,600 contracts a day, Liz. This is not like we're trading millions of these things a day. It's a very small amount of trade here. We have huge control set on Bitcoin that we have on no other products at CME. So this okay. is just a reflection of the sentiment of the Bitcoin market, not a reflection of the, what the futures market has done to the price of Bitcoin. Terry, thank you so much. And uh, good luck to your Blackhawks. Maybe they'll get an identity for Christmas. Oof. Woo. Yikes. Thanks, Liz. Appreciate it very much. <laughs> Good to Happy see holidays you. to Thank your family. You. <laughs> Thanks so much.